Hey, welcome back to Start and After Effects. So in this video we're going to be looking at masks. Not the ballroom kind, nor the toy kind. Anyone remember masks from the 80s? They were a combination knockoff of Action Force, sorry, G.I. Joe, and knockoff Transformers. Masks are arguably one of the most important tools After Effects provides, mainly because you can keyframe them. This means you can change their shape, size, feathering, and even opacity if you wish. And before the roto brush, they were the quickest, easiest way to rotoscope in After Effects. To be honest, there are still occasions when I'll use an animated mask rather than roto brush, but that's probably because I'm old and forget the other tool exists. Okay, enough intro. Let's jump into After Effects. And we're right where we left off in episode 3. I have my three guys, the middle one is hit by a phaser and vanishes. But if you have ever seen an episode of Star Trek the original series, you'll know the unfortunates hit with phasers usually glow blue then fade out rather than just vanishing in a jump cut. Oh, and if you haven't watched Star Trek TOS, then what, seriously? Anyway, what we want to do here is take the central figure and turn him blue. Once we have that, we can then keyframe the blueness. So if I have a look at the keyframe set on the black solid layer, you can see that the second keyframe corresponds with the phaser beam hitting middle dude. Let's call him Dave from now on. Anyone being evaporated should at least have to name. Making sure the Dave layer is selected, go to Edit, Duplicate, or hold down Control and hit D. Now with this new Dave 2 layer selected, click on this pen tool in the top toolbar and zoom in on Dave to be able to see where to add mask points more accurately. I can hold the spacebar and drag around the composition to reposition my view. Click to add points of your mask. If you click and hold and drag, you'll automatically create a curved line. Single clicking will create direct lines between the points. Don't worry about being massively accurate. We can go back and adjust the points and we're going to be feathering the mask which will give us a lot of leeway. Make sure you join up the mask at the end. This will give you a complete cutout. Now if I zoom back out and turn off the visibility of the original still Dave layer, you can see I have Dave isolated. Looking at a couple of the tools here, I can zoom in and grab these handles to improve the shape of the mask, aka its path in After Effects. Clicking and holding the pen tool, I have options to add or remove a point. Let me demonstrate that. Clicking the Add Vertex tool, I can move to any area of the mask path and click to add an extra point, and I can take it away again just as easily. Convert Vertex tool allows me to take a point that doesn't have Bezier handles and quickly add them. It's like the equivalent of Easy Ease for keyframes, and you can switch between curved lines and straight lines using this tool. Finally for this menu, the Feather Mask tool lets you adjust the mask's visual feathering. Feathering is a bit like Photoshop's brushes, instead of a hard outline you can have a soft edge. Back on the timeline, making sure Dave 2 is selected, hit MM to expose all the mask properties. I could have used the layers twirl down options to get here too. Here are the properties I mentioned at the start. Note how each one has a stopwatch next to it which means I can keyframe it. There are two options I cannot keyframe, and that's how the mask behaves. Clicking on Add shows that I could set it to None and not have it do anything to the image. There's quite a few effects like Stroke, for instance, which use masks. So I might want to have a mask, but not have it affect the image directly. Subtract cuts out Dave rather than the background, and the other options work with additional masks on the layer. If I draw a square mask and set it to intersect, note how the only part of the image left showing is the bit in both masks. The other options, to be honest, I rarely use, so it's hard to think of an example where you might use them, but they're there and worth playing with if you desire. 
Finally, instead of a mask being set to subtract, you could leave it on add and use the invert checkbox. Let's take a look at the keyframe options now. If I check the stopwatch for mask path and turn off the extra layers and move to further forward in the timeline, I can now grab any of the points just using the regular selection tool and move them around. And then when I move back and forth along the timeline, you can see the mask move. This comes in really handy if the subject is moving and I need to adjust the mask to stay in position. Actually, After Effects now lets you track mask shapes and we'll look at that later in the series. I'll delete the path keyframes for now, I just wanted to show you what's possible. Feather lets me soften the outline, and Opacity lets me fade just the contents of the mask. If I draw a circular mask around Dave's face and fade the opacity of the first mask, you should get an idea of what I mean. Expansion controls the size of the mask. The path keeps the mask's shape, but the expansion adds or takes away pixels. See what I mean? Resetting everything for a moment and turning back on the other layers, I'm going to add an effect to the Dave mask layer. Search for tint or go to effect, color correction, tint to add it to the layer. Tint works by changing all the white and black values in a picture to the colors you set. So I'm going to pick two blues. Now it's on the whole time but we want to grow from the phaser point, so clicking and holding on the rectangle tool, select the ellipse tool, and move over to the composition and bring your cursor onto the point where the beam hits. Now, click and drag to create a circular mask, but as you do so, hold down control and the mask jumps so that instead of starting in the top left corner, you're now creating a mask from a central point. You can also hold down shift and then the mask will become an exact circle. Let's just draw a small circle for now and then in the layer properties expand mask too. Oh, incidentally, you can change the color of the masks here. Sometimes it helps identify them. And if you don't want to see the masks on the composition, you can use this icon to toggle them. This can come in handy, especially at this point where you can see if the mask points are not correctly lined up. Now, let's set Mask 2 to Intersect, and then move to the point where we want it to appear. That second keyframe on the beam layer. And scrub down the expansion until the blue shrinks completely. If I go too far, because I've set the mask to intersect, we get the original mask back. So I've just got to be a little careful around here. Set a keyframe for the mask expansion and now move forward a few frames in the timeline and crank up the value. And let's use Feather to hide that strong edge. Quite a bit, I reckon. And then let's expand Mask 1 and set its Feather up a little too. And increase its expansion. This'll cover my mistakes. Now, let's drag our Blue Dave layer above the continuing video layer. We're going to have this fade out while the action resumes. So let's hit the T keyframe to display opacity. I think we want Dave to fade out just after he's gone fully blue. So set a keyframe for 100% where you want the fade to begin, and then move forward a little and set a second keyframe down at 0% where you want Dave to be gone. Now it looks a bit weird because normal color Dave is still there. So let's drag the continuing action layer to line up with the beginning of Dave's fade. This way he'll fade out into the action rather than being a jump cut. When we preview this back, you can see we're getting there. There's still a lot more we could do to this shot, but hopefully you're starting to see that by adding multiple layers, effects and masks, you have the tools you need to create visual effects quickly and easily. In the next video, we'll be looking at transfer modes which comes in really handy when adding VFX. Thanks for watching.